All right, getting back into the fitness game. Uh, lots happened over the last year. Uh, very fortunate to meet um, my boy Zach here. Zach just moved here from Mexico. He's in the States now. We're actually getting him ready for what well, was the Toronto Pro. Yeah. And now we're shooting for Mexico Super Show. Mexico Super Show. Tell me a little bit about what's going on with the Mexico Super Show. What do we got going? Well, last year I did the same show. So I did Mexico Super Show. I have to do a regional first, which is on the Friday. And then the Saturday, very next day, same show, I get to do the Pro Qualifier. So because I was living in Mexico, um, I signed up for the MPC as a Mexican resident. Um, therefore, I couldn't compete in a regional show here in the USA. So they said that I had to go back, do my regional show there. So I'm like, it just makes sense to do that show again. And also, I think it's probably a good idea because they know me. The judges know me there. The show knows me. So... I came second in the pro qualifier, so like I'm right there. So hopefully this year with some training with you, and then all well, the diet's always good. I know how to get shredded. I think this year is going to be the year that I turn pro. For sure, I, uh, I already firmly believe that, bro. You already have a, a pro body. Everything I've done over the years, everybody that I've already worked with, dude, you're you're there. So literally, we have to show up and win the fucking show, man. That's where we're at. Yep. Um, so yeah, Zach moved here. Um, what three months ago? Yeah, three three months, three months ago. Um, as a lot of people know, I've been coaching for several years. I work with a lot of high-level athletes. Brought Zach in, man. We've been killing it together. We've been training hard. I've been introducing some new training styles, man. As far as all the training going from previous years, how's everything going right now with all the training? For me, like my training, I guess, style for the last 10 years has kind of been the same. Like I trialed new exercise. I trialed kind of new modalities. But I think to strip it back and go back to the basics and learn how to properly engage the muscle has been what's you know most beneficial from training with you you know watching you know certain people on youtube like mike van wick who we're going to be lucky enough to train with you know next week has also influenced you know the way i train and i think it's it's showing a really good result like i'm getting much better contraction i feel like i'm growing really fast um and i enjoy it too because you're not just slanging and banging mm -hmm. like i see so many people just throwing weight around and it's like i used to be that guy Right. You know, so. I think we all used to be that guy because back in the days, man, we what's really cool in the, and, and where, where I'm at now. And like you say, we got Mike coming down here. We're going to learn a lot from him. Mm -hmm. We come from an old school, hardcore bodybuilding background. Yeah. And those days, man, it was literally the Ronnie Coleman's, the Dorian Yates. And yeah. what did these guys do, man? They packed on serious amounts of load and were throwing this weight around like it was crazy. I will say, though, Dorian Yates, in my opinion, from all his videos, because he used to watch him, he really did target the more controlled movements yeah. with heavyweight. Yeah. You get Ronnie, that dude was just, just on another level. Around, yeah. He's just on but, another level. But I'm not Ronnie or fucking... Right. Or we're Dorian, not fucking Ronnie right. Coleman, right? And, and Ben Wick says that all the time. Right. He's just like, you know, so many people, you know, contrast his training style to like, you know, these guys. And it's like, you're not these guys. You're not. No. I just love the fact that I don't have to lift as much weight to get the same result if not better for sure you know and also too with that being said you also reduce the risk of injury right i was going to say the longevity now is so much better i don't even feel close to being injured anytime i train i don't have any niggles like you know touch wood but you know my joints feel fantastic and i'm moving like 40 percent less weight yeah it's amazing so to touch on that topic uh, everybody, well, let's say majority of the people are all about how we can move weight. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to understand the internal side of the weightlifting process. So yeah. what can we do to understand contraction? How can we apply time under tension? Yeah. How, can we, how can we, uh, control the load through the eccentric and the concentric side of the movement, right? Yeah. It's not just going in there and putting a heavy weight on there and making sure that everybody in the fucking gym sees that we're lifting 315 yeah. pounds. Mm -hmm. Like me and you do, we're 270 pounds, but we go in there and we lift yeah. 135, 225, with really good form, man. We People always control. Must be looking at us, being like, "Yeah, what the? Are these guys going to go up? Is that a warm up? Yeah, right. Yeah, is this their warm up like, set? We're done here. Yeah, <laughs> you know? but no, you go in there, you use the correct movements, yeah. you understand the internal contraction side of yeah. things. It's not always about the load. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a firm believer of a lot of load, mm -hmm. but we got to be able to control it. We yeah, got to be able to mess up. up. Work right. your way up doing this this same method with proper technique, slow and controlled tempo. And then week by week, month by month, of course, we're going to increase the load. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that happening already since we've started training, you know, an extra half plate. I would say half. You would say quarter. Yeah. Qu <laughs> quarter. Quarter. There quarter. You know. That's my Australian like accent. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of the Aussies. But then then again, you, you say the badass now, too. So it's badass. all good. We got a mixture of both. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to slowly assimilate to speak more, more Texan. You probably will, man. Texas... Uh, 
Texas has its own little slang, and we we're really proud of it. You know, down here, there's a strong twang. Yeah, there is, and there like is. you know, obviously, we introed me from being from Mexico, but I'm actually Australian, as a lot of people would be able to tell by my accent. But when I was living in Mexico, I started getting this weird ass fucking half like Spanish kind of twang, and I hated it, man. I would talk to my Australian buddies, and be like, what the "Fuck, are you talking about, dude? I don't even know how you would mix Mexico with Australian." No, because I'm speaking Spanish, I was right, speaking right, right, Spanish. Right. So it's like my Spanish isn't great, but it's good enough to get me by. I cer- certainly can order food, you know, yeah. Spanish really well. Um, but yeah, so I was just like getting this weird twang, and I hated it. How were the gyms down in Mexico? <sighs> Subpar. You know, there's a couple that are all right. Uh, they're usually owned by you know Americans, um, but definitely not the quality of Texas. Texas is such a good like bodybuilding hub. That's yes. one of the reasons why I want to move here as well. You know, the people are super friendly. It must be the, the southern hospitality thing, and then that coupled with the fact that there's just so many sick gyms and just it's just a better culture here for sure yeah well texas dude i mean look look at all the greats and not necessarily just the number ones but look how many great bodybuilders have, have generated out of texas yeah. man yeah. we have a really good bodybuilding industry here and just i mean just us being able to go over and train at the labrata facility man i mean that's changed our our whole entire energy and everything there you go Thanks man Hunter for the show yeah man going. i mean uh shout out to hunter labrata and lee labrata over yeah. at, uh, over at the labrata the big hub over there man it, it literally has changed our whole mindset of training because man zach and i we've been kind of hopping from gym to gym he lives about 45 50 minutes away from me so we make do kind of every day but we're literally kind of jumping around gyms you know for body parts but that's the best way to do it i think yeah you you find the best of whatever you know the gym has and then just utilize that Mm -hmm. specifically i think like when we first started bodybuilding you know in my instance i didn't have any money so i was just like i need the cheapest gym i need to be the closest to me Mm -hmm. that's that was the only factors It's like, well, I need to fucking push some weight around so I have to get there and I can't afford multiple gym memberships. So being in this position now, I'm so grateful for, especially, you know, having Hunter and and Lee welcome us to their gym. Right. Like that, that's awesome. Well, it's nice when you actually have a facility that actually houses the correct machines all in one. So we don't have to fucking hop around, you know, 45 minute drive here and there, you know, while we're talking about gyms, um, you're going to be opening up amp gym. Correct. So I've been working on the amp gym for the last two years. It is actually going to be a smaller scale or smaller model of the pure muscle and fitness up in Canada where, where Mike is uh, coaching out of. Well, it's easy Um, to be small to that. That's a, Big ass gym. It's a big ass gym, but my whole my whole concept here is uh, I, I'm I want to open the best gym in Texas. I want I want the South Mecca down here, and we yeah. we don't have that. There's a lot of guys that claim it, but when you actually go in there and research the um, the machines, yeah. nobody has the perfect machine bodybuilding gym and that's what i'm building and that's why it's taken me so long is because literally the last three years i've went out and i've worked out on every piece of machinery that i have coming i wanted to make sure that every machine had the proper biomechanics for the movements and the lifts that we want to do so i went out and i researched panada atlantis watson i've got some life fitness stuff coming but majority of the stuff is all atlantis and panada the to, in my opinion they are the ferrari lamborghinis of machines man they're phenomenal yeah, machines man for so. sure and, and that was another thing that i'd noticed since training with you like i'd never really took it enough time to really appreciate what machines were good and what what weren't Mm -hmm. you know i'd go around and i'd I'd go through the movement patterns and some machines i just inherently wouldn't like for whatever reason but i didn't really analyze that right and then when we started hanging out and you told me you were gonna you know build a gym you started to show me all these machines and why they're good and i'm like well they feel good so it's like intuitive i love those machines but now i'm so in tune to what is good and what's not so when i go to a gym i can just fucking Mm-hmm. scope it out for sure you know? so yeah unfortunately to majority of the people out there um we we go into a gym with an external view meaning we walk in there we know this machine is a row machine we know to pull it but is that machine going to optimize or really benefit our lift or our our mechanics and majority of the the shit that's out there is it, it's shit it, yeah. it's bottom line it's shit it's not actually keeping our mechanics where they should be and if whenever you dive into like proper lat training so we stick on a row or a pull movement um external rotation of the elbow is very important so some machines either if they're diverging converging typically a row is going to be diverging um we want to keep the elbow as tight to the body as possible right. whenever we do this to get a good lat contraction also too uh direction of the elbow is key for latin tr- uh, contraction you don't want to necessarily think about rowing straight back you want to think about thrusting the elbow down into right. our pools otherwise you're going to get more teres minor majors some rhomboids bicep will be involved you know you want to take a lot of the grip out of a lot of that so a lot of these you know back machines since we're sticking on the back machines this applies to all the machines we have coming for the amp facility but back since we're on this topic these machines from atlantis and watson and panada 
it, it's like it's effortless. You just get into that machine and they're designed and engineered to move exactly how we need to contract that lat muscle or that muscle that we're training. Which lends to what we're saying before, not having to use as much weight. Correct. If the machine's following the right movement pattern, mm-hmm. then you don't need to load up the weight to get the right fit. Right. And, and to touch on that subject too, just to dive into it and just understanding how machines work, especially plate-loaded machines, and I'll dive into kind of both of those. Plate-loaded machines, if you notice, whenever you push uh, the direction or the range of motion, there's something called a load curve or strength curve, and that it means basically where is that plate moving? So obviously a plate or load needs to be moving completely vertically. It has to be moving up and down for its maximum tension or maximum load. So all these machines, depending on the muscle group or the machine that you're training on, the strength curve could be different versus the lat machine or the row next to it. So you could see two machines in my facility that looked almost identical, but the load curve can be different. What I mean by that is, say you pick up the weight and when you first start to pull it, it could be real heavy and then the load tapers off due to the strength curve for maximum squeeze in your fully contracted position. Mm -hmm. I could have a machine right next to it where the load curve is different, where that's completely opposite, where it's light in the lengthened position, and you're going to have to squeeze as hard as you can because that load is getting heavier and heavier as you squeeze. So understanding strength curve or load curve of a machine is very important to to proper bodybuilding or muscle development. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, not even that, but I have a hypothesis about the new machines that are being built for, like, let's say, general population or just you know big box gyms like i i feel like they're designed for the user not to get injured because i feel like they're not getting the right you know movement patterns and they're just very rigid in their movement and and the way they operate i just feel like i can never get a good squeeze on like those you know big box gyms majority of unfortunately are like that but you got to think about what i look at what that gym owner or what that gym is trying to do and unfortunately a lot of the models out there are Here's a gym, <clears throat> become a member, and, and we want you, and we ne- you never use it. We'll have 5,000 members, but like a- Planet th- Fitness, right? Yeah. That's it, the model. That is, that's the model. Yeah. Where you get a specific few guys, and we have some of those guys here, um, and we, we, we have the pleasure of knowing some of these guys. We'll actually take the time out there and go and do their research on proper machines. But when we get into that or dive into that, then you have to make sure your marketing is correct because people need to understand why they're coming to that facility for those. But yeah. yeah, to really answer your question, man, a lot of the shit is just mass produced as a row machine or a lat pool or a chest press to fill up a gym to create members. And I think that also reflects reflects the price point of the gym. So your yep. gym's not going to be, you know, that lower ten dollars a month type thing. No, no. And for me personally, I would be happy to pay a higher end ticket if I knew all these machines were the machines that you're going to have. If you know you're going to get the benefits out of that facility, right. you know you're you're working with the best in the world. Mm-hmm. You pay for that. Yeah. I will do it all day long. Also, too, um, just understanding the, the whole gym industry and stuff like that. Nowadays, and I'm, I'm going to touch on this, of course guys we know we got to develop content it's how we grow everything is is social media driven but that's one thing i'm really going to try i don't want to say avoid but i want to try to monitor as much as possible i I was watching a uh, reel the other day and somebody was over at alpha land and i've only been there once cool facility is exactly what that's for yeah but and that gym is made for that but i mean this 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 girl was basically just going off saying like guys what the fuck i couldn't walk three steps without tripping over your tripod Like, dude, we're here to work. And especially at the ant facility, man, we're here to we're here to provide results. Yeah. And it's not just results for, you know, that the average per oh, I want to work with every variety of people. We're not just, you know, gonna be strictly driven towards bodybuilding, even though that's our passion. That's my passion. That's what I want to do is work with a lot of bodybuilders. But I love working with anybody that has a health and fitness goal that wants to better themselves. I don't care who you are, I yeah. want to work with that type of person. I feel like that'll be a natural progression for your gym anyway, you know, like the culture will be just defined by its members. For sure. So the people that are in there will be working hard. Therefore, mm-hmm. you won't have as many, you know, people being inconsiderate with, you know, tripods and things like that. For sure. That'll be a natural progression. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, we we want you to build your social media. We yeah. that's I mean, we do it. You and I do it. We, we do it all day. That's how we get everything out. But at the, at the same time, we got to have the gym respect. Yeah. And that gym respect at my, my facility is going to be very strict because I want everybody in this gym when they're in there to understand they're coming here to achieve something. They're coming in here to get the fucking job done. They know they have access to the best machines in the world. They know they're going to be growing in there. They're going to be getting better. So I want to make sure that everybody in there is compromising and making sure everybody has the right energy and you know motivation and inspiration in the in the facility. I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. Have you got like a estimated time or it's? 
Right now, man, we're still waiting. The Panada order will be in in three weeks. So I'll have another 19 machines in from Panada. We did another Atlantis order. The Watson order is still 22 weeks out. So, man, I'd say at the end of the year, man, would be a, a good. That'd be awesome. Yeah, a good good time for that one, man. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm trying to figure out. Um, it's up in the air, guys. Um, I'm trying to figure out how we can provide some extra um, some extra things with the facility, not just having the best machines. I'm thinking about bringing tanning in there as well. Um, you can get tan in there. I'm thinking about doing a Versa Spa where we can do spray tan in there as well. Um, I'm really, really considering on putting a sauna in the male and female bathroom. I think a sauna is just key to to proper training um, or, or, or health in general. There's been some studies that I was watching on a, on a, a podcast the other day of just how um, – uh, how heart healthy the sauna is after you train or even before you train yeah. just sitting in there for 15 to 20 minutes it, it just reduces your risk of stroke heart attack just being in that type of heat environment so well why don't we just ask the people that are viewing like what would they really like in a one-stop shop right you know, a gym that has everything in their perfect world what are the like three you know things like a sauna steam room or whatever they think is necessary or they would love to see like if right. you have something you want in a perfect gym which it will be Drop it in the comments below. Absolutely. Take yeah, we would, we would love to hear from you guys for sure because literally what I'm trying to do is provide the best training facility in the South. That's what I want for you guys. Um, this is a one-stop shop. You will not have to go anywhere. I'm making sure that I have hand-selected the perfect, the best in the world machine so you don't have to go anywhere else. I mean, literally, this is your fucking hangout. This is your spot, you know? I'm just sitting here like thinking... I would say I want a, a sunbed, but if you guys can maybe tell, I'm a little bit red. <laughs> I can't get out of it. Yeah, I, I've been trying to tell. I've been trying to tell Zach he's 17 weeks out still right now, bro. You don't need your tan right now. Oh, he's starting to build his base already. If you're holding extra body fat, you got to have extra tan. It's just the way it works. Um, how do you feel nowadays, man? Being in the gym and seeing like all these people with tripods and stuff like that does that does that upset you a little? Does it make you frustrated in the gym? Is like what the fuck? Like, are you here really to train? Well, for me, you know, I started Instagram like ten years ago. Yeah, I started it so early, and you know, I didn't have tripod back then, but I'd have people film me and stuff in the gym to do my heavy lifts and stuff. And that was how I started my business, and that was how I became you know successful in the industry. So, there's a part of me that you know does like it because i'm like i respect the hustle and there's another side of me that's like there's just no tact to it they're just kind of like they put the tripod right in the middle of a walkway or just you know don't respect the other the other members so like it's kind of a it's tough for me to, to answer that yeah you know? I see how it's tough that because man, like I mean, you've done extremely well with your social media, man. I think your fitness page has what seven hundred something thousand followers. Six fifty. Yeah, man. So I remember starting the social media stuff back in the days. Unfortunately, man, I am not a social media guy. Like I've always been the behind the scenes guy. I'm learning it right now, understanding, trying to develop and grow. Amp right now is, dude. Everything is it's social media driven. Our lives right now is all about social media, and it's just going to keep getting more social media and more. So learning to adapt with that, learning how to get the business model side of things or the business side of it um i'm trying to adapt to that so it's been it's, i'm actually been fortunate to you know i don't give a shit bro i'll film you any fucking time yeah. you know it's all about how we can we can grow you know of course so I appreciate you doing so yeah i mean yeah. dude that's i i want to see my whole circle win dude i don't give a fuck dude i just feel like i'm like inconvenience people sometimes nah. like, hey, man can you just film this set for me like, <laughs> It's, bro, it's the way it is now. You know, I look back at it when I started, man, and, dude, we didn't have shit, dude. There wasn't even MySpace at the time. There was no yeah. YouTube. My YouTube was the fucking 280-pound pro bodybuilder doing his insulin in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> that was my, my you know, YouTube and, and Instagram. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we our knowledge was how those guys were training and what they were taking. You know, that's how I got started. Yeah. Unfortunately, now, you know, there is some health, you know, shit that i'm dealing with and uh, I, I encourage everybody to get their blood work done man you can get you, you know everything off of your blood man um but yeah you know trial and error and, and all that shit I, do i regret it no because i love this fucking sport dude i love this life and i'm gonna die being like this but can we can we um can we do this safely and is there a lot of knowledge out to where we can fucking research and find out how to do this correctly there is there is a lot of that so um 
I do take, you know, the TRT stuff. I've been on that for a while. I've come off of a lot of my gear. I actually haven't even ran a cycle. Like, I would say a real cycle, cycle yeah. in probably a decade, man, oh, where, where I was stacking, like, massive amounts of shit and doing fucking a gram of testosterone a week. But at the same time, I was 300 pounds, barely wiped my fucking ass. I feel attacked. <laughs> right. That was more guys Yeah, you know, like, like I mean, I used to, and, and once again, this was still at the time where it was like, nobody really was out, out talking about this shit. Now I can grow on my phone and hey man you need to take your test your training your fucking it's like god damn that's just like everybody talks about it now well, that's another topic <clears throat> in itself you know like through my progression in my career at the start it was such a taboo subject that no one wouldn't talk about mm -hmm. it and that's where this whole fake natty thing came from people were pretending that they're natural when they're not and like i've always been transparent about it sometimes when people ask me on my post whether i was taking steroids i just avoid it at the start of my career because I thought it was going to affect my sponsorships. Right. But nowadays, you know, it's, I just don't care. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I use tests. Yes, mm -hmm. I use fucking other compounds when I'm prepping for a show. How else do you think that I'm going to look right. in the best shape? Right. And that was a decision that I made 10 years ago. I've been doing steroids for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. But each to their own. I don't care if you're natural. I don't care if you're on steroids. Like, I just think that the people that are natural should just give a fuck less. Like, right. why, why are they just so proud about it? No one cares. I, nobody really, ca nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you this right now, and I don't give a fuck what people say or comment on this. There is no fucking magic steroid out there that you can take and get fucking big. Yeah. You have to show up every day. You have to put the fucking work in. Now, does it optimize and make you feel like a fucking Hulk in the gym? 100%. 100%. But, dude, that's just going to make you gain muscle. And another thing, too, <clears throat> a lot of now with what I'm taking... It's all about recovery. I've, I'm back in the days, it was all about how hard can I fucking work out. I'm in the gym for two, three hours. Dude, we're in and out of the gym 45 minutes, hour tops. If it's a hardcore leg day, just because we're resting fucking a lot longer, we yeah. might be in there an hour and a half, maybe, maybe. But at the end of the day, it's all about recovery, man. And that's the difference where me starting about, uh, or starting into the bodybuilding game, I was killing it nonstop, just driving all this fucking weight, lifting just stupid man yeah. just trying to I remember uh, my buddy's dad unfortunately he passed away dude we'd have six plates on a fucking barbell shrugging that shit and I remember right when I got yeah yeah just sitting there and I mean like every time face. we'd shrug yeah dude every time we'd shrug it it fucking hit the rack a little bit yeah. and it's just almost like a bouncy off we didn't give a fuck dude we were just in there to move weight and he was yeah. he was five Probably five, eight, nine, so two, seven. Emotions about yeah, this big. I mean, we're moving it this big, but yeah. we didn't care. We just yeah. wanted to move fucking weight in the gym. Yeah. You know, we felt like we felt good doing it. We too. felt like gods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was fucking awesome, man. Yeah. But um, the recovery, man, like that's what I have learned. For um, it, it was well, as far as being an efficient athlete is yeah. all about recovery, man. How fast can we recover to get back in there and tear that fucking muscle back down? That's the first thing I notice once I get off cycle. If I finish a show. And then I go into like a health phase, which is usually just low level TRT and HCG. I'll notice my recovery is the, is the thing I notice for most because I'll still try and train as heavy as I am in a prep when I get off, because I think, I, I believe that that's the best way to maintain the muscle that you've achieved. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I'm, you know, getting off all this source that I've been on for, for the show, that's the first thing I noticed. The recovery is just nowhere near as good. Right, right. Nowhere near. Yeah, that soreness level, man, that lactic acid buildup starts lasting like five, maybe yeah. six days. It's like, God damn. Those like, like days we've been doing, bro, I would have been sore for five, six right. days. But now we're recovering after three. And that's what, like, you know, it's cool to touch on that topic. So I like, like we're talking about, I'm on like a, we call it a TRT, but I'm on, I'm on my testosterone right now. And what I've been really loving are the peptides. Yeah. The, it's the best I've ever felt right now with these new peptides, especially specifically for recovery. The ones you're using. Exactly. Mine are specifically for recovery. So right now, you know, for, if people want to understand about training splits and how to actually train, train the body efficiently, uh, Zach and I, we've actually changed our whole training style around to where we're shocking every muscle group two times a week now yeah. so we're literally training one muscle group or one body part we'll do it we'll do a push day and then a pull day and we're hitting that push day on a monday and we're right back into it on a thursday yeah so we're only taking what one one rest day right now mm -hmm. so a sunday rest and i think for anyone out there who's looking to try and develop a workout split i would suggest that it should be based around your fatigue level mm -hmm. so that's why we do a push pull legs push pull legs rest is because our fatigue level isn't as high because we are on trt for yourself and then i'm on on cycle so we're recovering quite quick and it does allow us to do each muscle group twice a week if you're a beginner then maybe it might be best to do upper body rest day lower body rest day upper body rest day lower body because your fatigue level is not good it's going to be through the roof like, right you know um when you first start out everything sucks it fucking hurts and i know that so 
if you're a beginner, it's not something that we suggest is to go straight into a push pull legs, push pull legs rest because you're going to be fucked. You will. You're going to be so sore. You will. In a, in a touch on that subject, I was just actually talking to one of my clients. Uh, she just started with me. Um, there is no way for us as a coach or anybody that you are going to say you're with a trainer or a coach, there's no way for us to gauge your lactic acid or soreness level. No matter how we train you. Now, my goal is to get in there and always give you a good workout. My goal is not to kill you or destroy you. That's retarded. If, if, you're, if coaches are doing that, they, they, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But a lot of my, like, I call it my on-ramp program whenever I have, like, a first-time athlete or even if it was somebody that used to train back in days, but say they took a year off or whatever, work came up, life came up, whatever. I always come into an on-ramp program where we do a lot of body weight movements first. If you can't manipulate your own body weight first, why in the fuck am I going to put load on you? Yeah. It's stupid, man. Like, that's a higher risk of injury. So majority of the time, whenever you do take a long period of time off, like Zach is saying, your, your recovery rate needs to be, you know, three, four four days or something like that, or even a, a, a on day, off day, on day, off day would be a good split as well, too, because typically when you come in and shock a muscle for, uh, say you've been off for a long period of time, it's going to take you two, three, maybe yeah. four days of recovery just in that one muscle before we can break it back down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think like a new client as well, you need to, you need to figure out where their limits are. Some guys and girls will come in and they'll just be like athletic. So you, you, right. you can push them a little bit harder and the recovery will just be inherently better than a lot of other people like general population. So it's good to kind of figure out where people are at and, and not just bust their ass straight away. Right. Because then they're just going to fucking hate training and they're going to hate you as a coach. For sure. And they're never going to come back. Yeah. So and it's like there's a fine line that you have to tippy toe on. You know? Absolutely. And then also too, rest time within your sets is very yeah. key too, man. Like, you know, um, depending on the goal, and that's one thing too, is always finding out what your, your client or what our goal is. What is our goal? What are we trying to achieve? That's always what we're pushing for. That really determines your rest periods. Yeah. Rest time is so important in between sets, man. If it's 45 seconds, you know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, all of that matters determining or depending on the lift yeah so it's very important I think um, as an advanced lifter um, like us and like many people that would be watching this I think the best strategy for myself in terms of rest periods is based on the, the air that I'm getting in if I'm mm -hmm. super gas I'm not gonna get into another set for sure you know I wait until I've got my heart rate back to a kind of a normal mean mm -hmm. average mm -hmm. and then I'll go again it's not about you know looking at my fucking phone and being like okay 90 seconds is up right right back into it right we usually have you know two hours to train if we need it and it doesn't take that long very often so it's like if I'm ready to go I'm ready to go for I sure just try and be very intuitive with that yeah and also too uh, this actually happened to us the other day so weather's changing in Texas oh, of course all we don't talk about the weather but let's talk about the weather because yeah Houston's fucking Zach Zach's getting introduced to fucking Texas weather how we can literally be in fucking sweatpants and a fucking hoodie one day and then we're in our fucking speedo the next well I'm not in my speedo he would be in his Love but uh <laughs> but uh nah man so we were we've been training and literally the week before we're like we're on our game man my my, my breathing's good my cardio feels good my strength is through the fucking roof dude you last uh, well shit i guess it was maybe w wednesday when we hit legs uh they had the doors open at the gym the heat and the humidity was coming in and it it, it killed me it almost is like what the fuck i thought i was doing good here it's the humidity for <clears throat> sure like that's the that's the main catalyst but also right now apparently as you texans have told me it's the pollen in the air the pollen All is the horrible allergies man like i'm allergic to grass pollen as i told you the other day and it's it's smashing me and yeah. it's also smashing Natasha too. It's it's bad, bro. Every yeah. time this year, I mean literally you'll walk outside. If you got a black car, it'll turn yellow. I mean the pollen just sits. Mm -hmm. I mean I had my I had the vet wash yesterday, dude. It, I walked out an hour after he left and it's it's got a yellow haze on top of it. Just sit, it's bullshit, man. Yeah, I was doing I did like I think a record for myself. I think I did twelve sneezes in a row. <laughs> and like I, I enjoy sneezing. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy sneezing. But when you do twelve in a row, it's like starting to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> like the bigger you get, I fuck. I, well, I cracked my sternum the other day when I did a sneeze. I sneezed oh, so shit. hard I had to go. Come on. Oh fuck, dude. Like <laughs> winded me. <laughs> <laughs> well, get used to it, man. Because right now this is just yeah. this is just a, a little taste of what's it's to come, gonna, dude. It's gonna get worse. Well, the, the pollen tapers off, but the humidity here in Texas oh, yeah. and the heat. I mean. Uh, I, I, I coach outside in a in a fucking you know hardcore style facility or gym, um, dude. I, I'll go through four or five shirts. Literally, almost every two clients, I'm changing a shirt because I'm I'm drenched. I'm soaked because well, of the you humidity. You even notice like how much I'm sweating in the last two weeks. Right. I'm going. My shirts are drenched when I train. Mm -hmm. Could be due to the anabolics as well, but yeah. You know. Well, that's good. That body's that body's moving. <laughs> you good sweat. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. Um, but also, I was going to say about the the weather in terms of the heat i'm used to the heat because of mexico so mm. the humidity is fine like 
I'm I'm comfortable being sweaty. Like I'll just change my shirts and stuff. But it's the pollen that fucks me up. Yeah. 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 The pollen, like I said, that'll taper off. But other than that, man, we got the heat here. Uh, but me personally, man, I'm, I enjoy the heat training. Yeah. I've just got to. I mean, we get used to it. We'll get used to it. But dude, heat training is so beneficial, man. Keeps the muscles warm and loose. Dude, I've been to Thailand 20 times. <laughs> because of being in Australia, it's a nine hour direct, right? So, you know, in the last 10 years, I've been there 20 times. And I go there for training camps. So I mm -hmm. go there for like two or three weeks. And I'll come back just shredded as fuck. Like anabolics are, you know, over the counter as well at pharmacy. So it's, it's the best place to go for a bodybuilder for sure yeah food is cheap accommodations cheap so i just bounce out there come back three weeks later dry shredded because the weather's hot as fuck that's so, right you know it's a perfect little training mecca dude with that one day with that being said man because you've got to experience the world not a lot of people have had the the, the privilege of doing yeah. that you know as far as like being in the fitness industry and being in bodybuilding in general um how, how has like the atmospheres for you like has some of them affected you has some of them been like wow this is the ideal training like space for me to be first say like so my question is like how is it versus texas mexico australia thailand how is it around the world with different training facilities and training environments australia like where i grew up is kind of it's good for gyms because there are you know plenty of good gyms like well gym on they have well gym here or no uh the I've heard of it, they're but I've never Australia. been to one. They're yeah, big in Australia, and th those gyms are pretty good in terms of bodybuilding. But I think the bodybuilding scene in Australia it's nowhere near as big as America, and obviously mm -hmm. that's probably due just to the number of people here. And you know, I, but in Texas, it's much better. Mm -hmm. in Texas is much better for an Australian traveling to you know Thailand. That was great because it gives you a little escape. You have a holiday right. and a training camp at the same time. The gyms there are actually surprisingly good, like more so now. Like back when I started going ten years ago there were sweat boxes, right? And mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you're not drinking your water, you're going to be dehydrated as fuck. Right. And, yeah. But I would say, I would say Houston is probably the best place for me to be right now. You know, when I'm taking my bodybuilding so seriously, I think this is the best place for me to be. The environment's good. And what's cool, man, is, um, Houston's great. Like Houston, we've got a good, good crew of, of a bodybuilding, yeah. say, crew here but man once we start so we got all the shows coming up um with with amp guys uh with the supplement company i'm an npc sponsor for a lot of these shows i try to support all of the npc shows i support all of the ed and betty shows john sherman shows branch warren and and um uh metro flex brian dobson man we always kill all their shows they're some of the best in the world we have some of the best shows in texas here man and what's really cool man uh coming with us and coming along with me man uh s some really good gyms are up in dallas man yeah and majority destination dallas right De we got destination dallas we got the original metro flex and one of the new gyms and i'm really stoked to go see is this new absolute recomp where they're um i've seen honey training chris bumstead and oh, hottie called? yeah, yeah and they have a lot of the new panada stuff over there Sick. so i'm, I'm I'm looking for it. I heard it's like a thirty-five or forty thousand square foot gym. It's yeah, yeah it's it's stupid big. So looking yeah, forward to those trips. I, sure. I can't wait to get up there and just show you the different training environments, dude. Metroflex, just to be in the environment where Ronnie Coleman, you know, train there with Brian, Brian pushing his ass, just to know you go in there and grab a fucking dumbbell that he touched, dude. It's a different type of fucking motivation, yeah. dude. Like it literally the, the environment there. And then one of my guys, Aaron, dude, he's one of the hardest training motherfuckers I've ever worked out with, man. And his intensity levels through the roof. So when we get to the original Metro we'll flex, sure. yeah, Brian, we're coming up there, bro. We'll be up there. <laughs> uh, branches show what, um, whatever his new show is here in a couple of weeks, man. So we'll, we'll go check that one out. For yeah, sure. I'm looking forward to it all. It's going to be a really big year, and I'm just super happy to be bodybuilding again. Like, had a few months off at the end of last year. I lost a lot of size, and like, I just kind of had another business venture that I was putting too much time into. Um, not doing that anymore, and I'm just I'm happy to be back doing what I love doing. So bodybuilding is it for this year we're gonna fucking smash it we're gonna smash it bro we're gonna kill it dude you already dude you already have a pro physique you're gonna turn pro this year no matter yeah. what man we just got to get you back on that stage we got to kill this posing uh if i had to say dude you have the best team around you right now just the privilege of being over at labrada having hunter and lee uh logan franklin man franklin, uh, we need to get logan on the show here with this man yeah. we'll talk some more bodybuilding stuff but just having him here as far as being one of the best poses in the world man i, I to date he is one of the best i've ever seen man he he's it's phenomenal so just having him in the corner helping you work with it dude there's no reason why you're not going pro this year it's a good recipe yep got everything you know dotting the dotting the i's and crossing the t's for sure for sure
All right, man. Uh, I say we close this one up, man. We, yep. we covered a lot of good topics today. Stay tuned, guys. If you like this, uh, or actually, man, if you want to tune in and give us some comments and feedback, what you want us to talk about, we're going to be covering a lot of uh, bodybuilding topics. We're going to have some awesome guests on our show. So let us know what you want us to hear. We're going to be covering everything bodybuilding. If you need anything, we don't give a fuck if it's what steroids you should take. We want to spread the knowledge, man. We're not doctors, but we want to educate people as much as possible how to do this safe and get to the best possible body and physique you can, you can achieve, man. And also, guys, no topic is off limits. So if you have questions you want to ask us to talk about some shit that you think is far left field, crazy, we'll, we'll talk. That's about us, it. man. We we want to educate and try to try to help you guys get to your goal as, as much as we can. That's what we're here, guys. So, yeah, looking forward to the next show, man. We're out. See you. <laughs>